And now, here's the breakdown with Justin Hunt. Justin, man, you did it again. Every day, man, every day we level up. This one is a big one. It's a big one. We got Daz Dillinger in this bitch. What's up? What's up, y'all? I'm glad to be here. Bro, yeah, it's like I'm talking to a fucking, it's not like I'm talking to a fucking legend. Yeah. In the game. For sure. Let me just run down for people so they can really understand. (laughs) We were just talking about All Eyes on Me dropped last 20, week yeah was it 20 years ago or something or 22 six, years ago. Tw- yeah i mean you know i pre-made it two years ago but um, before the 20 no shit two, you know. you, and you were you, <laughs> that's inside. you, that's you, inside you produced the fuck out of that one yeah you know the first seven songs on there plus one at the end you know i was the first producer to come in contact with tupac when he got off the plane because we all had to meet at uh the you know the other you know the restaurant that we went to the little mafia restaurant well, that must that that must have been a meeting of the minds. Yeah, it was good. You know, like that's why I was only ordering lobster salads. You know, no chicken salad. I want lobster salad. Just balling the fuck out. Yeah, and a bottle of Cristal. What the fuck did Pac order? He was a steak. He was on that steak shit. Yeah, he had a big old porterhouse. It was super big. I told him burn mine because it came back real <laughs> small. <laughs> Keep it, yeah, keeping the stereotypes alive. Like, yeah, excellent, well done. Yep, and then we went to the studio, and then the first song we did was Ambitious of a Ride. D- did you already have the beat ready for that? I had the beat ready already. I had it on ADATS. We were, we were talking about best songs, th- the best opening songs ever, and yeah. Ambitious of, as, as a Rider is like, it, yeah. it's, it's arguably five, one easy, of them. Easy top five greatest opening songs ever. Well, I appreciate it, you know what I mean? So you're making the beat, you're like, this is for Pac. When you're making it, or were you Nah, just- it was just, I was making beats in my basement, you know what I'm saying? And then I got a call from Suge Knight to meet him at the Mafia restaurant. And I, you know, so I just brought the beats with me, you know what I'm saying? And Tupac was there. What was he like as a person? Just out of curiosity. Oh, he was good. You know, me and him, we Gemini's, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So we click and, you know, we ambitious. We just keep it going and just da 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 You know what I'm saying? Steadily moving. Don't stop. So, you know. How long did it take him to write that fucking song? Because that, like. When that, I went to go smoke a blunt, came outside and do something, he was done. <laughs> and then we went to do, uh, I Ain't Mad At You, the next song. Bump, da bump, bump, bump. Yep, and then I that's had like Met the, the Man That's the Elder man. Barge. That's the Elder Barge oh, sample, yeah, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, Shout out to them. You, you, you're, you must. Your, your, your music. You just must be digging in crates like a motherfucker. Oh yeah, you know uh, we got musicians in our family. You know we all play and really. You know what I'm saying? And piano. My daughter played excellent. You know, always. You know, and hey, just keep the music going, man. You know the money don't stop. What's the sample on Ambitions as a writer? The sample that I got, which is a format, which is uh, Pee Wee Herman. That one? I never know that. I didn't. I never would have guessed that shit. That's crazy. I never would have guessed that shit in a fucking million years. Yeah. It's crazy. It's a brand new dance. Yo, uh, forgive my ignorance. What came off... Did, did did Dog Pound come out before or after that one? Uh, Dog Pound came out first. We were supposed yeah. to go on tour. Then Tupac came, so we dumped the tour and started working on his album. That's why we never went on tour. You guys never toured at all? On the Dog Pound album? It just came out like 95 or October. Wow. And Tupac got out 95, almost at the end of the year. So we started working on him. I'm the producer, so I really couldn't go out. That went platinum. Dog Pound went platinum three times. Yeah. Do you think that hurt your sales? Not going, not going on tour. I mean, as we look at it now, as far as you know, records. Yeah, but we could have did more. Was, that record was huge. Dog food. Yeah, it was a huge record. That was a motherfucker. Yeah, that was. A, yeah. Tell me about that New York, New York shit. Uh, you know what I'm saying. We went out to New York. You know what I'm saying. We gave it up for New York in the song. Yeah. And they took it the wrong way. You oh. Know? Because it wasn't because um, you guys were stepping on buildings or no shit. That was after the fact. Okay. Before right. we made the song, we was giving it up for him because the hook was made by Melly Mel. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So we just took that. So we thought we was, you know, we always thought thinking, you know what I'm saying? So we did that and they took it the wrong way and they started, you know, was shooting and all kind of stuff. And then when all that happened, the video directed it to another direction. And then you're like, well, fuck it then. And Tupac got into it and, you know, Biggie was on the radio. He was telling everybody, 
go down there and represent, blast, shoot, do it all. You know what I'm saying? And that's when all hell broke loose. As a Midwesterner, um, mm-hmm. I felt like the West Coast won that shit. Just so you just, yeah. I mean, you know. There was like, there was like two, they, there was like who shot you, uh, Nori, uh, the Capone Noriega, and then yeah. the, the, the other, fuck. There was another really good that song that was out, too. I looked at Noriega and Capone video when they first, I was laughing at it, though. You know, it was funny. Yeah. I know it wasn't me. <laughs> you know what I mean? But, you guys are, and everyone's good now, but right? But we good now. I just yeah. talked to Capone the other day online. You know what I'm saying? Me and him going to get together and put a project together. I talked to Nori all the time. You know what I'm saying? Everybody that we was feuding with back in the days, we all good friends. We guys are man. fucking grown-ups now. It's like. Yeah, and we, and we have to realize, man, we was fighting somebody else's battle. How long did it take to realize that? That's that's a really good point. I mean, you know, it's we realize it, but it takes time for everybody else to realize. You got to calm everybody else down from it. You yeah. Know? If you go somewhere and somebody act a fool, they're not going to say his name. They're going to say, Jew. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do that bottle of wine over here. <laughs> How are you and Corrupt? You guys good? Oh, yeah. We was just rocking at my uh, release party the other day. You know what I'm saying? We always doing shows. We got shows coming up. Dazmatazes, Dazmatazes, Dazmatazes. That's that's a new one, and you do know that. You did? Did you do all the beats on this one? Yep, did everything. Oh, oh you got on. yours. Yeah, I got right? one. Yeah. You know, I'm gonna keep it going. You know, can we give a, can, can we give some of these away? Yeah, eight eight seven four two three three four five. If you got, and they good... pressed up by Daz Dillinger personally. You know, so this is you're, you're getting. Yeah, you're not fucking dealing with I anything. Mean, I'm not. I'm, you know, I'm self-proclaimed. You do manufacture the shirts and, you know, all my merchandise, everything, you know what I'm saying? I'm glad that Best Buy and Target and everybody stop selling CDs because that gives the artists a little bit more leverage to make money yeah. and to own and distribute their own product. And I guess the people that are uh, that are the true fans of you, they want the Real physical product. copy. Yeah, because you can't hold no it. digital copy. No, you can't. Yeah. No, how, long, <clears throat> how long do you expect that to last, though? Like, what, I feel the like digital. I look, my grandma's on Facebook now, so I feel like everybody <laughs> gonna end up on Spotify, right? How uh, not long, me. Like, you don't think so? I'm not on Spotify still. I ain't paid for the subscription. No. The only I, thing I probably paid for was the you know Apple because I'm on the Apple Beats. Either way, you know yeah, same thing. thing. As an artist, for me, like I just. I want to give whatever can give the most. Like back in the day, I will steal the fuck. I, I probably stole y'all shit. I stole the hey, fuck out of. Fucking, I'm not gonna even lie. With yeah. Sam Goody in the warehouse, yeah. there, I was in there stealing cassette tapes. Yeah, I would break the case. In, yeah, do one of those and get up there. I probably got caught twice. Straight up, I was like, uh, I, I throw it in. I would just go in there, grab the whole fucking thing, walk out like there was like like a uh, book bag, you know, like put <laughs> just put it on the side of my shit. The more blatant you were, the the less likely they were to fucking stop you. Yeah, just uh, walking in, and grabbing and run out. Yeah, yeah, just stroll. Hey, how y'all doing? I didn't even speak. You instead know? of looking around like you looking for some. Yeah, uh, you know. Yep. But I supported, and now, now to this day, now I'm spending all that shit now, so I don't feel so bad about it. Yeah. What was your what? You must have done some shit that you didn't get credit for on Death Row. You had to. You. I mean, you know, I started off with Dr. Dre, with the Chronic, which I got drawing programmer. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But I was scratching programming. I was producing. You know, learning all the stuff that Dr. Dre was doing. I was his first student. You know what I'm saying? Besides Warren G. Yeah. So, you know, I, I learned it all, and then um, history was made. How accurate was that N.W.A. movie? Some people that I... He, my homeboy, he from Compton. He grew yeah. up with Easy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Was it authentic? No. <laughs> I didn't think so. I, but it was it was entertaining as fuck. It just didn't... I was like, come on, man. He just... Snoop just walked in, and uh, there's like decided to make that song right off the bat. I was like, I don't know, dude. Uh, yeah, I was there when they made that, but it wasn't... And like, Easy didn't know that he was getting all the money. Like, how did like you don't understand the books like that? Like, I mean, fictional sales nowadays. Yeah, I'm trying does. to get my movie. I can't never get my movie out because there's so many people just stealing the ideas. And you really, know what I'm saying, and this person, Craig and Cal, and you know all these other people. So I just watch just did the cousin thing. You know what I'm saying? I got a series I'm putting together with my son and my cousin Julian. How close are you to Warren G? Uh, we all close. We like family. We grew, all grew up together. You know what I'm saying? What's the odds of just that amount of talent? Like it's it's ridiculous if you really look at the if you really look at the yeah. impact that you guys made in culture. Yeah. 
Like, what do you? But we didn't really know we was making an impact because we were steadily working and creating. So you know, we never got a time to say, "Man, we'll listen to the radio." Like, yeah, yeah, I mean, let's make some more stuff. You did shit on the Chronic. Yeah, I did stuff on the Chronic. I did Rat a Tat Tat. I rapped on the Day the Niggas Took Over. A uh, little ghetto boy, these nuts. I was all over there. I'm doing the skits and all that when they put the gun in your mouth. Oh, gring, gring, gring. <laughs> little ghetto boy. What was that sample? That was uh. That was uh Donny Hathaway. Yeah, Donny Hathaway. Yeah, Warren G came up with that one. I came with the ooh, with the little strings that was yeah. in there. Yeah, I put them in there. Did you did you how what was that creative process like? Did you did you enjoy? Uh, making shit like with Warren G and Dre or, or did you prefer to work on your own? We was all working together and then they would let me bring the drum machine home. Dr. Dre would let me bring the drum machine to the dog pound where we lived at and Warren G would teach me how to work the drum machine Yeah. and Dr. Dre would teach me how to take what I got from the drum machine to lay it down the track so I can add the bass and live bass and all that and then mix it together because we was working at Dick Griffey studio which was Solar Records. Yeah. And it was my first time seeing a SSL board and, you know, the tape. So I went to the back where Dick Griffey had all his masters at from the Whispers, Lakeside. And I grabbed one of the Whispers. I'm finna tape over this. We yeah. taped over there and he found out about it. Which Whispers shit was it? I don't know. He had Whispers on it. Yeah. It's probably the Christmas album. I fuck with the Whispers, man. Yeah. Fuck so, you yeah. know, that's when I started learning about the two inch and all What's the that. two inch? You know the big real, yeah, the real or real is called a two inch. They two hundred and fifty dollars a piece. There must be some shit that you did that you can't even claim. I did a lot because, of stuff because of clearance because of they're gonna have to come back and pay you and shit. But like I know there is, I know there is, Das. I mean, you know, I got a lot of situations going on, but I don't want to blow it up. Yeah, you shit. don't. You don't have to. <laughs> just you, you know, I got just to, know that w- super big. That's fucking cool as <laughs> shit. Is there anything? Is there is is there any song that you're like the most proud of off of off of? Is is there anything that that murder is, was the case? You did the first murder was the case. I'm the devil in the murder was the case. No Bring shit. Your lifestyle no, to me, I make it better. And how long? Eternal life and forever. That's me. Me and Snoop wrote that. No shit. Yeah. That was a that was a motherfucker. Yeah, and they that, did a movie on it. And, you know everything, man. You know I still get paid for those. You know what I'm saying. <laughs> And then later on, you have like DMX talking to the devil. You yeah. Know, like uh, Kendrick does that later on. It like sets up a whole. It sets motif. up a whole. Yeah. I'm, you know, I'm, yeah, I'll put a little bit of it. I love it. Is this you know it? Let me see if it's still. One of my favorite diss records is fucking is it was corrupt diss, corrupts diss record where he just fucking shits uh, calling out names. Oh yeah. Did I they, was um I was in talks with Murder Inc at the time, right? Yeah. And so you know me and Gotti and. Uh, you know, hanging out with the murder ink thing, and then saying, I know they like, man, what's wrong, man? I'm like, damn, corrupt diss. I was just about to go do some business over there. Was that, was that, <laughs> was that where oh, wow. he said, you sign, sign, Dad, sign, Dad, Dad's 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 sign, sign you? Yeah. yeah. I've used that shit to motherfuckers. <laughs> like somebody, somebody, like somebody lowballed me on my book. I was trying to drop my book, someone lowballed me, and I I was like, bitch, I'll sign you, motherfucker. Hell yeah. I'll buy your shit. You can suck my dick. I, st- I, I, Stole up! I just stole that from y'all motherfuckers. What was yeah. the first conversation you had with him like right after you heard that track? Man, what the fuck is good? <laughs> <laughs> like, come he on, like, man. Fuck them and da da da. So you know, hey, we robbed at the program. Yeah. So that, yeah, suddenly, yep, yeah, that's that. We'll make the money somewhere else. You know, it's like selling dope. You gonna sell it here? You it's, sell it somewhere else. It's gonna get sold. Yeah. It's gonna get sold. If uh, if you're just tuning in, we got Daz Dillinger, fucking legend of the game. You can follow him at D A Z D I L L I N G E R on Twitter. You know, yeah. you know, Instagram and all this yeah, shit. I'm like on that. Instagram. Everything is Daz Dillinger. There you go. I cornered the market. I got a quick question I've had for years. What's actually, up? the 1995 Source Awards. Right, that was a, that was the the first Source. Everyone always go to the second. You can never find the first Source Awards. I found a little clip on there. What happened on the first Source Awards? Well, I was like, I had it on here. It was on, I think I, it was on there where I was like, you know, if you got the best dope, it's going to sell. Right. Yeah. And, you know what I'm saying? And I just went up there and was like, fuck all y'all, you know, at the right. time. And I said, fuck everybody in the building. And I'm looking for that footage because when we uh, went up there to accept the award for Dr. Dre and Snoop, it was me, Rage. Nate Dog, and everybody was booing. Why did you feel that way? 
because everybody was booing and we was coming through there and they was looking like and it was it was really heated up like this was hip hops like it was unimaginable you know what I'm saying like the it was the, like the, the, the vibe like yeah. walking into a motherfucking arena full of hyenas and yeah you know that type of shit you know what I'm saying you got the Wu Tang over here you got Brooklyn over here you got New it's all New York you know buck fifty type shit yeah. you know what I'm saying yeah. And in that one, you also had Outkast. They won Outcast Best New Artists. Too. Yeah, and they was up there representing. And they got booed. Do you think that... Do you, do... But we always sticking together. We was from the West and the South. You know, West and the South, we always... In Midwest, we always, you know, we cousin. Well, you... the thing is, is fucking... <laughs> I, the biggest... The biggest, you know, the source. All that shit is out of all that shit is out of fucking New York. So right. they're biased. And I remember just as a Michigan dude, like, I'd be like... Yo, that big mic record is way more than fucking three mics or or some shit. Like I always felt like they were shitting on uh, MCs. I'm a big mic from three two. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, like I always felt like they shit on MCs That's that weren't three, from two. fucking New York and yeah. would and give extra mics to fucking MCs that were from New York. So yeah. I I couldn't imagine what that would be like as a fucking artist. Yeah, like when we went to the tunnel too, me and Corrupt. Yeah, you know after a show and. Uh, it was everybody out there, you know, from Mr. Gallia to everybody was out there. Ja Rule, the Diamond, you know, yeah. all of them, you know, Corrupt was just ripping them. I had my money out. And Corrupt's a Philly dude uh, originally. What, yeah. so what's, what's that like? It, it, that, that must be tough. Like you know, raised in Philly, learning the MC style, and then come to the West Coast to get the attitude and the, yeah. uh, you know what I mean? And to add both of them together, you know what I mean? That's a cold assassin. Did you do any work on? Uh, did you do any work on any of corrupt solo shit too? Yeah, I did it. I did uh, fresh. I did two songs on the first album, and then on the second one, I produced and executive produced on that one. Streets is a mother, and then we collaborated with Fred Wreck on uh, Space Boogie. Yeah, that was that. Yeah, that was. Uh... That's all. Classic and then we did shit. a slew of DPG albums and Dog Pound albums. You know, just. Just working, you know what I'm saying? This did you, shit don't stop. Did you do anything? Did you do your girlfriend? Did you, yeah, I did the girlfriend on Corrupts, and then I did the girlfriend on mine. I did two versions. Of Here's it. my favorite verse, one of my favorite verses ever. And I, tell me, I this was a corrupt like verse. Goofy. This is it right here. <laughs> right here. Shut the fuck up, bitch. Eat a dick, bitch. Eat a bowl of shit, bitch. I love that. on a mouth full of balls in the halls and malls. Shut, Shut the corrupt. fuck up, bitch, and work your job. Take a pill, bitch. Chill, bitch. That must be Shut awesome, man. You over here making these awesome beats, and then just people snapping on them like a motherfucker. Yeah. I just getting back into making the beats now because, you know, a lot of producers is out right now, so it's like it waters down your wealth as far as, you know what I'm saying, people want beats and saying, no, nah, I can get this, but I make more money. Producing and putting my own records out, you know what I'm saying. What did it? What, what did? What was it like for your writing process, rapping alongside fucking corrupt? I mean, you know, be me, but keep it lyrical. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. We would all give each other pointers, you know, because we we had a unit in a team, you know what I'm saying. But just keeping up, you know, being you. He say something fly, but well, we gonna say something fly too. On, did you ever have to like go back, be like hear? Did you ever hear one of his verses and be like, "All right, hold, hold on a yeah, second, sometime. let me, let yeah, me all go, the time, let me yeah. go handle this shit." Let me <laughs> all go the fucking time. handle this shit. You know shit. what I mean? But uh, he would hear my verse and go in there and rewrite his verse. Yeah, it, it, it would go back and forth. You know, still sharp and still. Yeah, yeah. And that's why we still here today. We one of the coldest groups on stage. Really? Now, you can have anybody else that go out there and perform. Yeah. But when me and Corrupt go out there and perform, the level is all the way up because we involve the crowd. Especially when Ain't No Fun come on, yeah. the whole crowd sings Nate Dog Park. It's the fucking truth. You know what I'm saying? And it's fun. You got and, feminists singing song. And like that I said before, we can do at least 20 hours on stage if we want. I did an hour and a half the other yeah. day by myself. Yeah. And then Corrupt walks in the building and I redo everything all over and we back on stage for another hour. You know what I mean? That's crazy. And I know all my lyrics because I get paid for them. You know what I mean? What do you mean you get paid? If, like, Publishing. Oh. If you're getting paid off of this song right here, you're going to remember the lyrics. Straight the fuck <laughs> up. Straight up. 
freak out. So you were able to not get fucked out of shit during for for uh, being with Death Row because that's like mm. the that's the rumor that like fucking everyone domestically get- it's a lot of shit going on, but internationally they couldn't. You know what I mean? They could ass gap, and that was just Suge Knight and Alan Grunblack from E One. You know what I mean? They did a lot of maneuvering and paperwork and. That's why E1 changed their name from Koch. They was doing so much dirt. No you know shit. Saying? Is that awkward, man? Like having to work with some motherfuckers you are like, damn, dude, you really got me. I mean, they didn't actually get us yet because we still going to court for it. So we're going to no see shit. them in court. You know what I'm saying? I think I'm going to sue them for the 100 million. You know what I mean? Yeah. And all the rights back. So we coming for you. Does, you it, strength, I mean? does it strengthen your case or weaken it uh, with Suge being in... I mean, I just, it, it strengthens everything. Is everybody telling on everybody right now? Yeah. You know what I mean? Suge Knight telling him, Reggie Wright, everybody. Everybody just telling him about how we did this and this and the police involved. Hey, it's all, hey, it's all good. And you're for just kind of sitting I'm back. I'm going to soak it all up, yeah. write it all down. You know what I mean? It's all evidence. You know what I mean? So all dirty stuff was going on in the business and everybody's telling on themselves. So let's get this. You have the law enforcement involved in record business. You know what I mean? So, how so? How were they involved? You, the police. Yeah, they was in the business. Should no night. shit. You know what I mean? Everybody was stealing from me. You know what I mean? So, quick. You know, hey, unsolved. Come out. When that movie? When that come out? I don't. Last the year, unsolved. Uh, whatever yeah. they got. Last the, year, mid, two thousand summer two thousand seventeen, right? No, the, oh. I'm talking about come out the, the Biggie oh. and the Tupac. Yeah, yeah. The new one. I just saw the I just saw the billboard for that. Yeah, right. yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's a, it's a lot going on. That's why I say it's hard for me to put my story out. I want to get everyone to get their story out, but we're gonna come with how we first got with Dr. Dre. How what? How did you first crime. get with Dre? Through Snoop Dogg. You know what I'm saying? He was uh, doing. Are you Long Beach? A uh, Long Beach originally? Yeah, I'm from Long Beach. <laughs> Yeah. That's ain't wrong. No, you said it right. Uh. Eastside Long Beach. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Snoop, my first cousin. His daddy is my uncle. My mother is his auntie. You know what I'm saying? We grew up snot nose taking baths together and all that type of shit. You know what I'm saying? That's fucking cool. What a fucking. Can you imagine the fucking. It's <coughs> a crazy gene pool, dude. Oh, uh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? We keep it going. You know, we've been doing this for what, 25, 30 years now? Yeah. Yeah, like a motherfucker. I started off DJing. I'm a DJ first, you know what I'm saying? Warren G's got a documentary coming out soon, too. It's, it's tight. I love it. Were you a part of that? Did you get, were you interviewed? I, uh, yeah, I interviewed for a little bit, you know what I'm saying? But I gave him mom. But I got my story, too, you know what I'm saying? Mine's a little bit more gangster. Yeah. So you got to wait a certain amount of time before nah, you can. I just got to find the right distributor, and, you know what I'm saying? I want to get paid for mine, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So. I understand that. Yeah. Yo, I remember when uh, Corrupt, because we were talking about Corrupt a second ago, he had a, a track, Get Busy, that Kendrick Lamar ended up quoting from yeah. on Control when yeah. he said that King of New York line. Yeah. That whole Control thing blew up in a huge way for Kendrick, obviously, as a lyricist, but I think it also brought a lot of recognition to a lot of the well, history and MCs of Corrupt, but also in, in, in the West Coast. What did you think about that verse when you first heard it? Man, I love it. You know what I'm saying? I love the little homie Kendrick, you know what I'm saying? Because he did a song dedicated to me, you know what I'm saying, and giving it up for Daz Dillinger, you know what I'm saying, before he was the God MC, you right, know what right. I'm saying, so shout out to Kendrick, you know what I mean, always, man, you know, I'm keep bumping that TDE all day. When you described the Source Awards, you felt like it was a room full of hyenas and everybody was real you know, Vultures and scandals. Do you feel it's, like hip-hop's like that now? That's laid like back now, it's like Disneyland. I was gonna say, yeah, and <laughs> yeah, they're just openly ripping each other off too. Like I can't tell this where like, anyone's from. See, back in the day, it was like going to the Carter. You know, mm-hmm. we was looking at Nino Brown back yeah. in the day. It was like that. You know what I'm saying? Now it's like going to Disneyland, Six Flags, Magic Mountain. I almost feel that fucking rap has become middle class now. You know what I mean? It's like it's this just a little softer. It's some commercial, yeah. everything. You know what I'm saying? You hear it, that new commercial with the beatbox and thing. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So. It's it's a little watered down. Did you ever think it would get to that point? Because I remember being a dot a dot the, I went to a Dodgers game and it was like four rap songs in a row and and I was like I would never this you would never hear that twenty years ago you yeah. would never hear four yeah. rap that's songs. That's what I said. In a like row. twenty years ago we don't have to. I mean we used to listen to rap music at nighttime. Remember? Yes, yes. It you know they didn't even play it on the R and B stations during the day. And that was only for an hour. Yep. You you know you, in Detroit the only one that got played during the day was uh, my mind's playing tricks on me like Ghetto Boys was <laughs> yeah, the only yeah, that was the one that was the one that like I sit alone in my four corner room staring at candles Scarface yeah. did, do you have a certain 
because you are from the West Coast and you kind of uh, didn't get the love you felt that you guys deserve from the East Coast. Do you have an affinity for other down for like down south rappers, Bay Area rappers, shit like that? All the time, that? man. I, I'm, I'm a producer, so I connect with everyone. You know, I lived everywhere too, from Brighton, Lansing, Michigan. You know what I'm saying? From Miami, Florida. I stayed on the East Coast a little bit. You know what I'm saying? I stayed all over. You, you know was in saying? Lansing? Yeah, my mother stayed out there. Magic Johnson and Malcolm X and you. Yeah, and I stayed out there in Brighton. My mother got a house in Brighton, but it was too, too cold out there, though. Trust I, I used to go out there yeah. and visit her. I've had to go back. When we know when the weave run out, yeah. it's time to go. I used to wash. <laughs> I used to wash windows out there. You had to put the blue shit in the bucket, or else it'd freeze to the fucking. Oh, you, the, the water freeze to the fucking I seen glass. This dude put a hot water on his window and just busted the whole <laughs> window. I'm like, man, what is? I know, it just. That's Dillinger, y'all. Did you do We Can Freak It? No, -uh, Battle Cat. That was that was a Battle Cat track. Battle Cat. Yeah. Are there any? Do you hear any tracks you're like, damn, I wish I'd have done that one. That's a, that's a motherfucking beast. Mm, not really. Nah. You know what I mean? But I like the tracks that I hear, you know what I'm saying? It inspires me, but I go in there and make my own funk. Yeah, yeah. It's just out about, the, it's just the sounds that you have. Back in the days, you know, now they got sounds on drives and stuff. Yeah. Kicks and snares. We have to make ours back in the days. And how would you do that? We would plug the uh you know the record vinyl up yep. and go through everybody records and take sounds and you know what I'm saying you hear hi hats and kicks and snare we would take them from the record and chop them and chop them up on and the then, and then we and then replace them yeah and you know make them filter and tight them out you know what I'm saying I just saw a documentary on the 808 how much did, did we had you, an 808 machine rolling did, did you use that as well yeah we took it from Dr. Dre everything Dr. Dre had we had <laughs> We was living at his house, you know what I'm saying, everything, you know what I'm saying. When Dr. Dre was going through that period where he was talking about detox and we hadn't seen it yet, then he puts out the Compton soundtrack. Yeah. Since then, he seemed to be a lot more active, involved in putting out different things. You look at Anderson Pack, you look at, uh, you know. The but they're not all signed to Dr. Dre, though. He just put them out, you know what I'm yeah. saying. But in, in terms of Dr. Dre, it seems like he's more active from a distance. Does it seem that way as, as his first student? Yeah, Dre active, you know what I'm saying? He's going to continue to thrive into the music. You know, he's working on something now, I heard, you know? What's the number? Th what, what would you say the, the number one thing you learned from Dre was? Uh, quality. You know what I'm saying? Not quantity. Like, you know, as far as, like, making it clear, making it bang. That's why when you hear this Dazzimataz album, it bangs. You know, it's mixed right, you know what I'm saying? And making it sound good, mastered and mixed. You know what I'm saying? The quality of it is every time a song come on, it's boom. You know what I'm saying? Dude, Not, I haven't heard any of it yet. You just gave it to me. Did do you feel? Did you feel like you needed to change your sound to fit with the mm -mm. time? Are you doing like any like uh, well, the, 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 the robot voice shit or what's that shit? The no, I ain't vocoder did, I ain't, shit? Or no, I ain't did none of that. You no. ain't do no, none of that. I was checking with my homeboy and I said, man, that's fucked up how they got T-Pain out the game. They, everybody doing that shit now. Ain't that something? Ain't, you know what I'm saying? You can't even, I don't even hear him on the radio no more, Harley. No, that's not, they did Ja Rule the same way. They right. clown they clown on him for making like the like the singing song shit, and then everybody else jumped on and fucking made millions off of it. That's crazy, man. So, you know, I just keep my sound because I know I create, like anybody that's on death row, they can't reproduce that sound. I made that sound. So when you hear this album, it fits right in. With that death row sound, was it as wild? Like was there was, was a lot of ass whooping going on at death row? Did they dangle Vanilla Ice? I wasn't there. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> but it seems like it because he told it. Yeah, that would have been a bummer. He's yeah. been remixing that. Vanilla Ice has been showing up saying I wasn't actually dangled. I mean, that's what that's what we got the money to put. You know, to do death row from Vanilla Ice. You know, no shit, saying? shit. Ice Ice Baby just went what fifty some million platinum. Right. And Suge Knight had the money. We First left this ones. Griffey studio and we was recording at Larrabee. Right. No shit. You know what I'm saying? So the money was dead. Who knew that Vanilla Ice, all that, all that shit that Vanilla Ice got, he helped fucking fund some of the best classics ever. I actually like Ice no Ice Baby, too. With no return on his money. No, <laughs> I, I, I fuck with Ice Ice Baby. I like that song. I thought I love that fucking Ice, song. Ice. That boon -na 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 -na. <laughs> Fucking yeah, I like that shit. Yeah, but Chocolate wrote that song though. For real? Yeah, the homie Chocolate, he didn't get no credit for it. That's when Sugar Knight stepped in. That's how that happened. Yeah, that's how I stepped in. 
Well, that's why that was the only fucking Vanilla Ice song I ever liked. It, I didn't like any of the other shit. That's yeah, the only like one that he one. wrote. Well, that makes sense all of a sudden. Yeah. First number one song in hip hop. First number one album. For real. That shit was yeah. And then it goes. You go on to build fucking Death Row, which yeah. is. It was the same deal with uh, fucking Bad Boy. It was uh, Craig, Mack, Craig Mack flavor in your ear was the one that fucking that's that's Not what kicked deal, it huh? off. And then you, the guy disappears. What a fucking what a kick in the ass that is. Didn't want to pay him, probably. I don't know. But Biggie, it really helped Biggie out. I'll tell you that much. Oh, yeah. Rest in peace to the B.I.G. Straight the fuck up. Dazmataz. I feel, do we have this, do we have, do we have it on, can we play something from, from here? Is I got, it, I got it, about 12 or 15 videos online right now. I just shot it within a whole week. So you're shooting videos for the every CD? Every song, yeah. Every that's, song on there. So you you spread fi- it out. You figured it out. That's like how you get it now. Yeah. Like you got to do the fucking video. You got to do the video, the visuals. So that's when I was like, I never really shot videos, but now I'm mostly definitely shooting every chance that I get. You know what I'm saying? We have the title track right here oh, yeah. available if you want to play it. Shit, like yeah. shout out to D Nice. You know what I'm saying? D Nice did some shit with you. Oh, no, I redid. Uh, boom, 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 boom. Yes, you know what I'm My saying. I talked to him on. My name is D-Nice. online. You know what I'm saying on Instagram. You know what I'm saying, and I wanted him on there, but he like I, I don't do it no more. You know, I gave him that respect. Yeah, man, I, I I just love your music, man. You know what I'm saying, and I redid it over. Cool. Shout so, out to the Turtles too, because that's where the sample came from. That was the Turtles. Yeah. No shit. Mm-hmm. That was yeah. Who the fuck knew? <laughs> I got the turtles at the crib on vinyl. I didn't even know. Yeah, for real. Damn, dog. That, who are some of your favorite MCs? Before we jump off into Man, that. My first ring is the God MC, Rock Kim. That's, that's. Then it's the God MC, Big Daddy Kane. What was that like when the first time you heard Paid in Full? We were selling dope. So that must have just fucking hit home right yeah, there. We were selling dope. I was young, you know what I'm saying? All my cousins and everybody was selling. They would just give me the, the rock shake. I would rock that shit back up and sell it. <laughs> why do you think that, like, why do you think that Christianity isn't as embraced? Like, if if someone's like a Christian rapper, like, they're thought of as corny. But, like, Muslim and 5% of rappers tend yeah. to do a lot better in hip-hop. It, it, it insights you with knowledge that's going on in the community, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And what's being affected towards us as a people, you know what I'm saying? It don't matter if you're black, white. Filipino is all like right now, what everybody going against now, Trump. Yeah. So you know what I'm saying? We all don't agree with what he does, you know what I'm saying? So we have to enlighten the people and let them know what's going on. And I think Christianity itself takes the person away from the world. Like you have to be all about the Bible and the word and the lessons. Right. So when you listen to a lot of Christian rappers, a lot of times they're rapping about the Bible. It's just, it it's doesn't just even too, connect in the same way. Yeah, it's not, yeah. yeah. It's crazy like once you know and you you start listening, you're hearing that shit in all these different fucking, you, you know, like woo, yeah, all that know, shit. You hear it. Poor righteous teachers and yeah. you know what I'm saying? Um, all the rappers back then, you know, who's kicking that 5% nation you know what I'm saying? The, the yeah. knowledge itself. You like know what I'm Christ- saying? Christianity, in a sense, is the exact opposite of knowledge itself. Yeah. <laughs> it's like knowledge of the Bible. Yeah, every day, you know what I'm saying? Knowledge of Jesus. Rock this funky joint was that jam. Rock that was a yeah. uh, slipping into darkness sample. Mm-hmm. Fucking killed that shit. Yeah. I've been I've King been, Son, you know what I mean? I've been doing a lot of drugs and listening to that war <laughs> album. Fucking from from front to back going on walks. That's that shit is fucking epic, Dad. I'm not even bullshitting you. <laughs> Just hit play and go for a walk, listen yeah, to that shit. Real, oh huh? my god, dude. Yeah. It's the shit. I love it. Let's uh let, let's jump off into the lead single. We have uh Dazmataz right here, ready to rock. Daz Mataz. Daz. Daz Dillinger, legend in the fucking game, man. It's so good to have you come by man, here, it's man. It's appreciative to be here, man. You know, I've been hearing you all the time. I've been looking at XM. You <laughs> hear me? This is straight up. When you was young, giving it to him. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm old now. I'm like, I, I try to, like, I was telling you that. I, I've, I like to avoid <sighs> conflicts now, man. Like, I'm just yeah. like, ah, man. You just keeping it. Did you like that? Fuck, nah. <laughs> well, I, yeah, still don't like half that shit. <laughs> I know, yeah. That, I've had a couple phone calls where they're like, "Hey, man, why don't you chill that shit out, yeah. buddy? We're friends with this guy." I'm like, oh, "Okay, my bad." Check it out, right here. Turns out to be a good song. I changed my mind. Yep. Shout out to D Nice. You know what I mean? Original hip hop. Here it is. Yeah. 